three PhD offers, one in the UK, one in France, one in the Netherlands. And I went for the one in Netherlands. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're just seeing my face for the first time, welcome, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. So in today's video, we're going to get a little bit geeky. So I have my notebook and I highly recommend you get your notebook as well. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you guys how I got multiple PhD offers and how you can get yours too. I'm telling you, there is tea somewhere. So if this topic sounds like something that is of interest to you, then keep on watching. Please, before you continue, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Share this video to your family and friends who may be interested in this topic. And without further ado, let's get into this video. I'm really, really excited. The first tip that I'll be sharing with you is for you to choose a topic research is very broad right it's not enough to have a background in let's say mechanical engineering or let's say chemical engineering or medicine when you're looking for a PhD position you need to look at the subject that you've studied and identify topics within that subject that you would love to do so I have a background in environmental engineering and for my master's I did energy and environmental engineering so my master's focused more on renewable energy solutions but for my PhD I wanted to do my research in how to integrate renewable energy in rural areas second topic that I was looking at was life cycle assessment because I did a little bit of life cycle assessment in my master's thesis. I really enjoyed the topic so I felt that for a PhD it would be interesting to also look at that area. The next tip I have is start looking for PhD positions on time. Guys, this was one of the major mistakes that I made. I wanted to start out my PhD maybe by end of 2018 or early 2019, but I did not start on time. I feel like if I had started searching on time, I would have been able to achieve my target of starting first or second quarter of 2019. So please start on time. The next tip I'll be sharing with you guys is decide where you want to do your PhD. Do you want to do it in Canada? Is it in the US? Is it in Europe? Any country at all, make your decision on time and begin to find out how those countries like to receive the application. Bear in mind that different countries have different ways of applying. The typical example is that for Canadian schools, you don't apply directly to the university, or maybe you do, but for the most part, first you need a professor, assistant professor, associate professor that is leading a research in the topic you're interested in or that has a research group in the topic you're interested in, then you have to email that professor to find out if there is an open position for you. But in the UK and in Europe, it's slightly different. In these countries, most times you get to have a research um, topic that the professor already has and is looking for PhD researchers to carry out that research. So most times this position is advertised. A research group is advertising that position saying, oh, we need a PhD student to do a research in this topic and so. So if that topic is of interest to you, then you can apply um, for that position and it's treated as if it's a job position. You will go for interviews, you will submit your CV cover letter and yeah, you also have other people wanting that same position and they could finally choose you or they've choose someone else. Decide which country, which location, which universities, if possible, that you're considering and then find out how the application process for that country, for that university is that's my second tip so once you have that down start searching i started looking outside of canada in november 2018 and man if i tell you that i was looking i was looking i would literally just go on google and say phd life cycle assessment europe phd renewable energy integration europe new zealand australia like that i just kept on searching especially the countries that were i was interested in and once i started searching I started seeing positions online. Guys, you will see, you will find it's just like job. And the good thing about a PhD, 
position is that a lot of universities are more open to get international PhD candidate. They are open to have that international community more than you will have if it was just a job. So be open-minded. Don't just limit yourself to one country or one state or one location. Once you've selected your topic and selected your, your location, that's where you want to do your PhD. The next thing I would recommend is to start putting a cover letter together and also start writing your CV. So for cover letters, there are a few ways that you can write a cover letter. You can just go online and search PhD, sample PhD cover letters. Or if you have a few people, a few friends who already are doing their PhD, you can ask them for maybe a sample of the cover letter that they use. That was the strategy that I used. I knew that I would want to do my PhD. So I had, I kept connections with some PhD students from my school where I did my masters. So what I did was that I I met up with some of these PhDs and requested for a sample of their cover letter, their CV, and if possible, a research proposal that they had. This would help to guide me to know what exactly to do or how to put my ideas together, to how to put my ideas and experiences together. Cover letter usually addresses like a little bit of your background, the reason why you've decided to do a PhD, and the reason why you've, this, you've chosen that topic. While a CV kind of gives a breakdown of your work experiences and research topics that you've done in the past. If you need a research proposal as well, you need to also like go online, look for sample research proposals and see how to put that in place. So once I found the topic that I wanted, the, first, the next thing was of course to, to submit an application. But before then, what I do is that I go to learn about the research group that, wants, that I want to um, apply to and just to see is there something there that I might want to add to my cover letter or is there something there that they want me to highlight when selling my so maybe their interest is that they want someone who has a background in environmental engineering and has done a research in life cycle assessment before. So if that is their requirement, then I have to adjust my cover letter to include in that cover letter that I have this background and I have done this research. Also, if it's an advertised position, most times they will tell you what they are looking for. If you have any of those skills, make sure to mention them in your CV because at least they will stand you out and give you a chance or an opportunity to get a seat at the table. So I wrote in my note that when you are writing your cover letter, make sure you highlight on your ability to carry out independent research. That is a mistake I see a lot of people make. Like just because you have a good grade in your master's degree does not automatically mean that you are going to be handed over a PhD position. Get that in your mind. PhD positions are research positions. Just like every job, the people hiring you need to know that you have the skills or you've done something similar to this before. So they need to know that you are able to carry out independent research, research on your own right? You're able to take a research topic, search about that topic and bring out ideas, unique ideas on how to improve something within that topic. In your cover letter, please buttress on times that you have been able to carry out independent research. This could simply be your bachelor's degree project. It could have been that you wrote a thesis or you had to do some research and you had to discover new ideas or new ways of doing things. Just say it there. State it clearly. It could even be your master's thesis. Please buttress that. This is particularly for those that are interested in looking out for advertised PhD positions. Please, before you apply for that position, try to have an up-to-date knowledge of that topic. If the title, for instance, I'm still going to use life cycle assessment, try to search what is life cycle assessment. What are the new let's say, ways of carrying out life cycle assessment. You need to have an up-to-date knowledge of the topic that you're applying for. Now, the next thing that I see people not consider a lot is your referees. A lot of times when you apply for a PhD position, they will definitely ask for a referee. Most times anyway, 90% of the time. In fact, in my own situation, all the times that I applied and they were considering me, they asked for referees. So guys, choose your referees wisely. Choose a referee that can vouch that you have carried independent research well. Don't choose a referee that cannot vouch for you. 
just because the referee has a big name. If you can find a referee, maybe in your faculty, that is already a professor and has a big name, that's good. But if you cannot find, please find somebody that can vouch for you. Find someone that you've worked under that can speak on your behalf, that can say good things about you, can put you forward out there. Because that's what I did. I made sure that I chose the two referees actually knew me very well. At least one had supervised me and the other one I had met him multiple times when I was looking out for PhD positions. So he knew me, right? So please make sure you choose a referee that can vouch for you, that knows you very well. So once you've submitted your cover letter and the CV, most times, like a lot of maybe professors who are looking for people will go through the cover letter and the CV and then they will invite people who are of interest to them. Another thing I wanted to address was I know a lot of people feel like for PhD positions, you need to have published a paper before. Most times, why they desire people who have published papers is that by having your paper published in a peer-reviewed journal, it kind of shows in a way that you have carried out independent research before, right? So that publication most times is like your evidence of your ability to carry out research and your affinity for research. But it's not always the case. Like for me, yes, I did have only one publication, which I actually did when I was in my bachelor's years, like my final year, honestly. It wasn't a very good <laughs> journal. It wasn't even a wonderful article. But what I used to sell myself was my master's thesis. My master's thesis, I think, was really good. And I was able to work independently and I scored very high in my master's thesis. So because of that, I was able to use it to sell myself as someone who can actually do research on its own, evidence my master's thesis. If you don't have a publication, at least look at your, your master's thesis. In what way can you prove that you have that ability to carry out independent research through your master's thesis or your bachelor's thesis or something? Okay, guys, guys, I think I've come to the end of some of the tips that I have. Please, if you do have a few questions, don't hesitate to ask me any question that you may have in the comment section, and I will do well to respond. Eventually, I was rewarded because I got three, three PhD offers, one in the UK, one in France, one in the Netherlands, and I went for the one in the Netherlands, of which I'll do a video why. I chose a PhD in Netherlands and some of the benefits that you have for doing a PhD in the Netherlands. Anyway, thank you so much guys for watching till this point. And if you've learned one or two tips, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Share this video to your family and friends who may find this helpful. Thank you so much for watching. See you in my next one. Bye.